Hello folks and welcome to NetCruiser Tech. This is a tech product that I received a couple of weeks ago and I've actually been using it for two weeks because I did want to give it a fair shake before I talk about it. It is an ergonomic wrist rest that is also used as a pointing device. It's essentially a mouse replacement. This device is quite interesting in that it is a wrist pad that has a roller bar on it that allows you to move your mouse cursor back and forth, left and right. You have a scroll wheel, or your left click, your right click, and forward and back buttons. There's not much to show you about the box other than the name of it. Interesting name, Ergo Slider Plus Plus. <laughs> plus Plus. Uh, it should just be one of those. And this is by the company Furzgo. Like I said, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and trying to give it a fair shake. The actual design and fit and finish of it is okay. Whoops. That's one thing. The bar is not captured in, but I wanted to show you how it's built. It's got these anti-slip pads on the bottom and it's all plastic design. And the wrist rest is pretty squishy. It's somewhat of, an, of a nice, comfortable material for resting your hands on, but it's, uh, it's not like a memory foam type, type design. So it doesn't actually like curve into your wrist. As soon as you let off, it comes back to its normal positioning. Now the roller bar is interesting because this bar is basically just a grippy piece of rubber with some what looks like, feels like almost Delrin type sliders on it. And it just sits in here and it moves back and forth and up and down. So this is how you move your bar back and forth. Now, like I said, I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and the type of material that it is picks up dirt and dust like crazy. And this would be particularly difficult to clean. Um, it's, it's almost sticky. Um, maybe like a piece of tape or something would be good to clean it off. But it hasn't affected its use at all. It's just more of a cosmetic thing. It is designed so you can be cleaned. This just pulls right off and then the bar itself can also be cleaned. And all this stuff just pops back on, just like that. Now how this actually functions, it has an optical sensor in here. This is basically a rollerball style mouse, but the ball is this bar. And it can slide back and forth, and you move your cursor up and down, and that's how you move your cursor. This is your scroll wheel for scrolling web pages and documents. This is left click, right click, back and forward. So that's the actual functionality of it. And there's a couple of interesting things where if your cursor, if you've moved your bar all the way over to the side and your cursor is not at the full edge of the screen, there's a little button. There's a button on each edge and that allows you to move your cursor back and forth. What have I done? Did I close it? Oh, did I close my window? How did that happen? It is a corded design and it runs off USB 2.0. Unfortunately, it's not wireless. I have a totally wireless system for my iMac and, uh, and this one wire does require to be plugged in or on a PC, so they don't make it wireless. And as far as I know, they only make this one model of device. Now I've been testing it on a Mac, uh, using it with my Apple keyboard and Apple multi-touch. Now I use this a lot and I've started to get some wrist pain because I tend to be working on this other work computer over here and then browsing stuff over here and um, my ergonomics are not great so I tend to be off on the side and just like scrolling like this and I started to get some wrist pain right in here so I thought oh I was offered this product to give it a review let's give it an actual legit review and see if it eases my wrist pain. I am happy to say that it has, but I feel like it has just because it's forced me to come over and, and work on this on a more ergonomic style orientation instead of being off to the side. There's one issue that when I'm typing, because of how much the Apple keyboard drops off, I do tend to have to reach over a lot. And I've tried having it right up close to the keyboard, right up against it, then you can't reach at the space bar without accidentally touching the roller. And I tend to end up having to like hold my hands up and do that. I found the best, most comfortable way is to have it about an inch back. And then it does allow you to just slide your hands up forward, type, and then come back when you want to be mousing. And it does work best as a two-handed device because the way they've got the click system set up, that's one thing that I'm a little bit picky about is clicking and scrolling. 
So when it comes to using a touch-based touch bar, you have kinetic scroll. I can just go like this and you get a very nice smooth scroll. So here's an example of scrolling with a touch pad. You get a very nice kinetic scroll. So this is just one smooth motion. When you scroll with the ergo slider, it is this roller. And the problem with this is it has no kinetic action at all. It's very much like going back in time to 10 years ago to mice that didn't have kinetic scrolling. So here's an example of how janky the scrolling is when you're using the ergo slider. You're so slowly rolling up, you cannot get a smooth scroll. It's very jittery and that type of stuff bothers me. Versus if I'm doing this on my touchpad, it is smooth as butter. You just have to lightly touch and it scrolls nice and smooth. You try and scroll smooth on this and you're either jumping 10 lines down or one line down and it's very inconsistent. Versus if you have something like a Logitech mouse, these have the, these have the non-clickable scroll wheels. If you buy the premium Logitech mice, they, I forget what they call this, but it's, it's their scroll wheel that is the metal type where you can click it and then it's scrolling or click it again and then you get long document scrolling, kinetic type scrolling. These are great. They should have put a scroll wheel like that into this, but it doesn't have it. I'm trying to be not overly critical about this device, but there's one killer thing about it, and that's the price. They want $250 for this. It is very much designed and priced as a medical or ergonomic style device. It almost seems to have the price point where they're expecting insurance companies to pay for it or for big corporations to pay for it. If we go to the company's website, they have one thing that really bugs me is they call it the world's softest click. I don't know how they're claiming that. How is this the world's softest click? Because this takes a lot of effort to actually click. It's particularly difficult because if you want to be moving your cursor to a certain location and then clicking on something, you can do it like this. You could be moving your cursor around and clicking on things. I'm finding this challenging to shoot because I don't know how to get this exposed properly and let you see what's on the screen. I'm just gonna try and hold it up here. So. If I'm going to move my cursor around, and if I'm trying to click on, let's say, this forum post, I click on that, I got it that time, but sometimes it'll click and drag on you. Um, also, one thing that's not working in Chrome on Mac is the back and forward buttons. They don't function at all. So that's an issue uh, from ergonomics perspective. That's one of the biggest features of a multi-touch trackpad is I can just take multiple fingers and swipe back and forth and now I'm back a web page. Two fingers and go back a page. I can take four fingers and change desktops. There's a bunch of pinch and zoom features that you can do with this. I am disappointed that this device has no touch functionality at all. It is good for some people that need a particular type of setup that cannot use a regular mouse. It's a really hard sell because I don't know how they can justify the price for the build quality uh, and the technology that's in this. It's just not worth that much money. It is a really neat design, but I would like to see a couple of major improvements made for a next generation. You can keep physical clicks for your physical buttons, but the touch bar, get rid of the click. Because something that happens is when you're reaching over to your keyboard, you, you, tum you tend to a, roll the bar, and then click it accidentally. So it'll take you off to some place you don't mean to go. Isn't as big of an issue if you have a bigger keyboard that, that sits up a little bit higher. But something like my work keyboard is not compatible because it already has a wrist rest on it. So it's it would be way too far back. So if you have a keyboard that has an integrated um, wrist rest, a big thick one already, if you already have an ergonomic keyboard, the ergo slider is not going to help you. The other issue with this is just the way that the clicking works. It's missing the ability to have a super light touch. They should not be calling this the lightest click in the world when there is no touch clicking. You know what the lightest click in the world is? It's when you turn on touch to click. I just clicked and I opened the link. That, that took no effort at all versus the physical click having to press harder. If you're trying to reduce repetitive stress movements, Having that be such a hard click, having everything be a hard click is not ideal. I would have liked to have seen some sort of a touch sensor so that you can be moving this with your thumb around and have a little click sensor on the back side. Have a little touch sensor on either side of here so that when you're rolling around, you could be rolling around with your thumb, very low impact, and then when you want to click on something, you just have to reach, you just have to tap it. That would have been ideal in my opinion you could be sitting here click 
click and, and never having to physically click down a button. Add touch sensor so that you can have touch to click as well as you gotta add a kinetic scroll wheel and make sure that your back and forward button's actually working all operating systems. It has a couple of things where you're just like, ooh, if they had have just put a, a bit more R&D time into this, it could have been really, really cool. I have been continuing to use it because I do somewhat like it. The actual wrist rest is nice. It is a comfortable device to set your to set your hands on. Every now and then I find myself I'm using it a little bit more, but I tend to use it in a different way. My use case has been in collaboration with the touch. I tend to move the cursor around to where I want it to be and then I'll and then I'll tap and I'm never scrolling with this. It comes down to being, this has just become a fancy wrist rest for me. Using my touchpad just as much as ever, but every now and then I'll be moving my cursor around just like this with my thumb. Okay guys, so that's the Ergo Slider Plus Plus. I, uh, in its form right now, I cannot recommend it. Unless it goes on a 50% off or, or more sale, then it might be worth an interesting pickup if you've got some carpal tunnel type wrist disease, uh, wrist problems happening. If you're, if you're making the same type of actions over and over and over again, it might be worth it. But as of right now, for the price of this thing, it has it also has no configurable macro buttons. It's, it's hard to recommend because it's mostly designed for mouse inputs. It has no extra features for removing repetitive injuries of, of using key commands or anything like that. That's where I try to, try to be honest about the products. This is my opinion. I still think it's an okay product. It's not complete garbage, but it's just way overpriced for what it is. And it's really hard to recommend in its current form. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm still going to put links in the description if you want to take a look at this. Maybe someday it'll go on a super sale and it might be worth picking up.